if you're like me, you are probably uh, pretty excited and curious as to how uh, our new quarterback, Matthew Stafford, might perform in the upcoming season. Now, at least um, for for me personally, you know, Matthew was someone I, I, I had heard about over the years, but I, I never really had my eye on or really uh, looked into that much, you know. And I, I remember... Um, I never really watched him in any type of playoff games. I do remember watching him like on Thanksgiving, like the Thanksgiving games that the Lions were always a part of. But it just always seemed like they, the Lions always kind of lost. It just it just seemed like that anytime I, I watched it. So I really didn't know a whole lot about him. But, uh, you know, ever since we traded for him, you know, there, there seemed, the, the hype, you know the hype is apparently real. From if you ask all the all the analysts and the experts, and everyone's hyping him up and saying how good he is, and you know this, that, and the other. And well, you know, and I just I, I found this article, which uh, which was a little interesting. It says here what Lions fans have been saying about Matthew Stafford's departure. So uh, this article here on that SB Nation site, site for the Rams, Turf Show Times, great site, go visit it. Um, put together a little piece here about Lions fans, uh, coaches, players, and pretty much their two cents on what they thought about Matthew and what they thought about him leaving. So I thought this was a good opportunity to get a little insight on our new quarterback for the upcoming season. And I just... <laughs> Check this out. This is pretty cool. I like this. It's got Matthew's face on a $100 bill. <laughs> it's all painted up. All swagged out. I like it. I like it. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's get into this article here. In late January, the LA Rams traded two first-round picks, a third-round pick, and Jared Goff to the Detroit Lions for Matthew Stafford. The two former number one picks swapped cities, but after 12 years of battling for a team that never lived up to what he deserved, Stafford may be leaving behind a more distinct trail of bummed fans in pre in his previous home. I scoured the archives. The, the author, uh, I believe it's uh, Mr. Kenneth Arthur here. I scoured the archives over at Pride of Detroit, SB Nation's Detroit Lions blog, and here are some posts that I've been reading this week about Matthew Stafford and how the Lions writers and fans have been dealing with the fact that he is now playing for the Rams. It may give us some insight into what Stafford really meant to the Lions beyond just the stats and win totals. <coughs> Excuse me. Unsurprisingly, it turns out that Stafford meant a lot to them. And this is something... I've been hearing a lot. I've heard he's uh, he means a lot to to the city of Detroit. I've heard he's um, done a lot for the city. You know, given a lot of you know done a lot of community service for them, and he's very well liked. So I can't imagine it was can't imagine it was easy for them to see someone like him go. But continuing on, Matthew Stafford's trade request was a blessing in disguise. Seeing the franchise quarterback traded away could not, well, there we go, could not be easy, but POD's Jeremy Reisman recently broke down both the talent of Stafford and the silver lining of trading him to the Rams. It is clear that the Lions fans and general manager Brad Holmes are aware of how special Stafford has been as a quarterback. For most Detroit Lions fans, Matthew Stafford's uh, request for a trade was a heartbreaking moment. For the past dozen years, Stafford and Stafford alone gave the Lions a chance to win every week. No matter the opponent, no matter the score, he took the Lions to the playoffs three times after a decade-long postseason drought. He showed tremendous grit on the field with his toughness and refusal to quit, even when 
no one would have blamed him if he did. Without a doubt, the Detroit Lions are a worse football team with him no longer under center. But, but requesting a trade may have been one of the best things Stafford did for the franchise. In recent comments from Lions general manager, Brad Holmes underscores this point. Holmes told the Detroit Free Press that when he first interviewed for the Lions GM job, he had no plans to move Matthew Stafford. And here he goes on to say, I totally had every intention on that he was going to be the quarterback, Holmes said. When I started breaking tape down, I was like, wow, this dude, he's a talent, which you already knew, but then you get refreshed when you start breaking him down like wow brad holmes uh traded him to the rams you know a lot of that probably had to do with his previous uh previous time with the rams you know him and les need used to work together so it's kind of a we we kind of got a little lucky there i think you know where there was a there was a kind of um a previous relationship there that probably took you know, probably took uh, priority over any other teams, but moving on here. What is your favorite Matthew Stafford memory? POD's Alex Reno gives his favorite Stafford memory, but there are many more, many more in the comments. My answer, there are too many to choose from, and I can't wait to read all of your responses. But when I think back on the Stafford years, boy, that sucks to say already. The first thing that comes to mind is the miraculous game-winning throw against the Cleveland Browns his rookie year. And so I I, I watched this the other, uh, last night, and, and this was pretty crazy. I mean, I, I guess I just somehow missed this when it happened back in 2009, but I guess Stafford led the Lions to a comeback victory. I think they were down by multiple scores, I think 24-3 to at one point. If I'm not mistaken, don't don't quote me on that. I'll have to check, but I think it was something like that. Guy come brings him back and he gets his shoulder like separated somehow on a big hit, which is kind of crazy. And uh he still comes back in with his shoulder completely separated and throws the winning touchdown pass. It was really crazy. I might might uh might need to come back here and play this in a in another video here. I think I'll do that. But uh Moving on here on the final play of the game and coming back into game with a bump shoulder. Yep, see, here we go. Th throws a dime to Brandon Pettigrew to give the Lions their second win on the season. Stafford might be the toughest son of a son of a B <laughs> in the NFL, and we should have known it from the start. This play epitomized everything that Stafford was to this team, and you knew from then on that he would never lie down and give up. That... Th th this video alone gets me so hyped like like it's i'm i'm i, I really liked what i saw here it's uh i, I think i think we may have I, I i think we may have hit a home run with him i think so but not 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 to get too ahead of myself not to get too ahead of myself but this next part here the ramifications of a matthew stafford trade could haunt the lions for a while this was written after Stafford requested a trade, but before he was sent to Los Angeles, it didn't hit me right away. Like I, like many Lions fans, was too busy dealing with the initial blow of Stafford leaving to comprehend the possibilities of what it all means in the end. After spending time reflecting, here's what I've come up with. This is, go <laughs> this is going to be hell on earth, and it's going to stink for a while. Matthew Stafford was the one thing holding this franchise together. He was, by far, the most important Lions player in team history. Some might say it was Barry Sanders or Calvin Johnson. I get that. But I'm not talking about talent here. I'm talking about a centerpiece that made anything possible if it was around. Calvin and Barry were never that. They were the best of a bad situation, not the staple that holds it all in place. So, I read this, and on some level, it reminded me a lot of the situation the Rams had several years ago with 
um, Kurt Warner and how the, I won't get into that whole debacle, but pretty much ended with him leaving and uh, getting replaced by Mark Bulger at quarterback and pretty much him leaving the team. And, um, and to be honest what what this, uh, what, what this guy is saying here, like I can, I, uh, I, I, I understand what that feels like because I was so, cause I was really upset when Kurt was le- Kurt left the Rams, especially how it kind of happened. I, I might dive deeper into that a little later, but j- just when he left, I just, I felt it was, I felt the same way. He was the centerpiece of the team. He was, he was the guy who won us the Super Bowl. Um, you know, and you know, he unfortunately he he got injured a few times, and you know, and in the Rams, and uh, felt it was, you know, they they felt Mark Bolger was the better option at that point in time, and and uh, so I I just kind of understand what 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 the Lions fans are going through here, losing someone like uh like Stafford. You know, it's a uh, it's a bitter pill to swallow. You know, but um, I remember when Kurt left, I, I wanted him to succeed wherever he went. Like I, I followed him, and I wanted him to succeed in New York, and I even wanted him to see, succeed in Arizona. I rooted for him hard in that Super Bowl when he uh, played. Uh, I forget which one it was. Um, he played the Steelers. I remember I was watching that with some of my boys in Orlando, and man. It just he got got so close, man. I was rooting for him hard in that game. I really wanted to see him win because I I thought that was one of the biggest mistakes the Rams have ever made. That ever since I've started watching them, and it was um, just a bitter pill to swallow. So I so I get where they're coming from here. And the next part here says, "What are your expectations for Jared Goff next season?" Many Lions fans expect Stafford to outperform Goff in twenty twenty one. Um, I do too. Look, Jared, it ain't nothing personal, Jared. I just, I, I just think Stafford's in a better situation, you know. So obviously, I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna perform a lot better. But who knows? Who knows? You know, golf might surprise us this year. We'll see. So there's a little bit of the stats here. Those numbers for Stafford seem extremely pedestrian for a guy who's supposed to be the missing ingredient for Sean McVay's Super Bowl recipe. When you compare them to Goff's projected output for 2021, at least on paper, this trade would end up being disastrous for the Rams. It's in my extremely well-adjusted opinion that Stafford will easily outperform these projections, but I think those numbers for Goff look about right. I could see the interception total being a tick higher and the passing yards substantially greater should the Detroit Lions find themselves trailing more often than not this year. But if golf, golf, excuse me, statistical output is something along these lines, would that buy him a vote of confidence from you in another season under center and Detroit? I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I just, Jared will, Jared's going to have to, Jared has to improve on a lot of things, man. So we'll, We'll see how that goes. Detroit Lions fans might may miss Matthew Stafford's mobility this year. Goff's passing efficiency efficiency under pressure in 2020 produced a point six six expected points added EPA per pass, meaning on average Goff a Goff's pass under pressure average point six six points in favor of the defense. EPA is fully explained here. If you go to this article, you can click that. Stafford, on the other hand, produced a solid figure at 0.26. Now, I'm not going to lie. I really, I'm not entirely sure how they grade this or, or what, what it actually means. So I myself am going to have to look into this and kind of read up because I am not sure myself. The different, so I, I'm just not sure. Are you rooting for Matthew Stafford? It can be difficult to root against someone you've been rooting for over the past 12 years, but when the, that player is traded for future first-round picks, that can complicate matters a little. My answer, I refuse to give a binary answer here. I'm a Detroit Lions fan. 
but I am forever a Matthew Stafford to, St Matthew Stafford fan too. He was too good to this city and too good to this team for me to wish him or his team any ill will. And this right here, this answer right here, this is exactly how I felt. It pretty much mirrors my feelings on uh, when when we got rid of Kurt, when we got get rid of Kurt Warner. You know, I was, I am a diehard. You know, I've been asked multiple times, like, oh, you, you know, when I was rooting for the Cardinals, watching Kurt in that Super Bowl. It's like, yeah, I'm a Rams fan, but I am forever a Kurt Warner fan too. He did bring us our only Super Bowl. He was good to this. He was good to the city of St. Louis, and he was good to the team. And I just didn't have it in me to root against them. I just didn't. And moving on here, it says, and yes, there will be a part of me that feels vindicated for defending Stafford against hater after hater. <laughs> if he lifts the Lombardi trophy with a team that was actually capable of surrounding him with talent, man, I just, I mean, I, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. I'm not, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. But I'd be lying if I wasn't drooling at the opportunity for the Rams to completely backfire. For the plan to completely backfire. If the Lions were to somehow get a top 10 pick from this haul, that would make this entire transaction a huge win for Detroit. And for as long as Stafford has been waiting to be a part of the great of a great franchise, I've been waiting nearly three times as long as he has. Which, hey, I mean, I get that. That's true. I mean, if we if we perform the the worse we perform, the higher a pick the Lions get. So, I completely get that. That's all to say. Let's split the difference. The Rams can go ahead and win the Super Bowl with Stafford next year, but then let's just have everything implode in twenty twenty two for the Rams. The Lions get the thirty second pick next year, and the fifth overall pick in twenty twenty two. There, everybody is happy. quite the quite the compromise there but I'll, I'll take that championship this year i don't and that's all i'm focusing on is this year so 2022 is a long ways away so i will worry about that when we get there and so nfc okay so nfc north rival jay cutler calls stafford underrated as you can see he says uh stafford's underrated he's got a cannon He says he was then asked whether Stafford is skilled enough to bring the L.A. Rams back to the Super Bowl. And Cutler says, I think so. I think he's going to blow it up. Coaching staff is good. He's going to have some of the best play calling he's ever had in his entire life. He's still talented, so he can throw. He's he's competitive. How well they perform. This writer thinks they're going to go 12-5. and five. And this is a lot of reading, so I'm just going to go ahead and skim down this here. A competitor at all costs, Marvin Jones Jr. offers even more Matthew Stafford praise. Former wide receiver uh, is praising Matthew. He says he loves the guy. He's a warrior. I feel like I say this every time I talk about him, but you can tell everything means a lot to him. All this means a lot to him. Being on the field, being with his brothers, stuff like that. They just don't make them like that no more, Jones told the media after Sunday's game. This whole, this um, this is pretty telling. This is pretty telling to hear from a former teammate to say this about him. You see, you just the thing is, you just never heard this from any of our players when they were talking about Jared Goff. I'm sorry, I I don't want to rag on Goff too much. I really don't mind him. But this, you, you just, you never heard this. You never heard Aaron Donald say this. You never heard Robert Woods say this. Uh, you never heard Cooper Cup say this about Jared. Ever. You, you know, and it just, I feel that's where Jared may have been lacking a little bit. But, um, but that's just my opinion, you know, um, from the outside looking in. So he ends here. We all know he's tough. We all know that he could do his thing. Nobody really knows how he feels, but when you can, see, you ah, 
but you can see he's a competitor at all costs. I would always rally behind him just because he proved time and time that he's dependable and tough as nails, and that's what everyone everyone aspires to be. So this this is getting me. Uh, I like what I'm hearing. Essentially, is what this is. And they talk about whether they're going to retire Stafford's number, and nine isn't retired. It's still iconic. Uh, I hope it will be unofficially retired at least. Um, so I'm not sure if they will. I'm not sure what their uh, thoughts on that is. I'm going to have to buy a new Stafford jersey because I, I was so hyped about last season, John Wolford. Um, I, I was very high on John Wolford and how he performed last year against Arizona. And, and uh, uh, when when Jared got injured, I actually bought a jersey with his old number, number nine. So, so obviously now I'm in a situation where Stafford has come in and he is going to be number nine. So I'm going to have to buy a new jersey, and that's okay. You know, I'll have a number nine of Wolford and a number nine of Stafford, which is – which which is all right, I suppose. Which is all right. I'll probably get that white uniform for Stafford. We'll see. I haven't thought about it yet. But I mean, that's pretty much it. It's a uh, lot of lot of good things, you know. Um, I expect out of Stafford. Um, one thing. One thing I would recommend, you know, it, it as good as Stafford appears to be from all these comments you know to sean i would say he is still a first year quarterback for this system and from everything i understand that this system is a little is is complicated and it's a little hard to learn so making it as easy on matthew as you can in this first season as he adjusts to the timing with the wide receivers as he adjusts to learning the plays and to reading the defenses you can help him by and, and anyone who knows me will tell you I'm a big advocate for running the football. I am always screaming at my television, run the football, run the football, run the football. I believe Sean McVay, while he's a great coach, can sometimes get a little too pass happy. Um, and it can be a little irritating because it's Football, football is still a physical game, man. At, at the end of the day, you still have to hit the other guy in the mouth. You still have to push him out of the way. And I love seeing our offense impose our will on a defense by running the ball down their throat. It's why I loved our our divisional win back in uh, 2018, which was at, which was our first playoff win in like over a decade against the Dallas Cowboys. And we did it by running the ball for over 273 yards on the Dallas Cowboy defense after everyone was talking about how Dallas was the more physical team and how Dallas was about to whoop up on us on the Coliseum. And we just went in there, ran the ball down their, ran the ball right down their throats. And, you know, Todd Gurley went off. Uh, my boy C.J. Anderson, I don't know him. I'm just saying that. I got off the couch and and ran on him as well. So, if and if you do that, you limit the responsibility for Matthew, and you kind of make it easier for him to integrate himself into the offense. That's just my opinion. Um, I believe that will help him. And I, Sean, you know, Sean, he, he way smarter at this than me. <laughs> let me let me tell you, he probably knows that. But just my observation, you know, he seems to be a little pass happy at times when the pressure is on. I would just recommend maybe lean towards the run a little bit just to give Matthew some time to adjust to this new offense. And uh, I, I, I think he can do well for us. So, so I like what I've seen. I, I like what I've read here. Um, excited for the season.